Oh, folks, how are you doing? It's Des Catties. Um, what I want to do is continue on from um, my carving, my previous carving video. And what I want to do is just kind of show you um, some of the tools that I use. Now, there's, you know, on YouTube, there's a thousand and one videos telling you what kit to use and all the rest of it, but this is really just coming from my angle. I've, um, I've had some nice comments even on, from people on Instagram where they're saying that I've kind of inspired them to go out and carve and all the rest of it. And that's kind of one of the reasons why I previously did that video of just showing me just a video of me just literally just carving a simple spoon. Um, so what I want to do is just, I've had not long ago, literally a couple of, like a day ago if that, I've had comments from people on Instagram private messaging me asking that they want to get started into carving and that they're um, asking me what tools to use and stuff like that. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you some different tools that I use, okay, and then the kit that I actually take out with me, the one that I would have had in the previous video with me the weekend. And then what I wish to do as well is that I'm going to obviously link some, um, put some links in in the description where if you are new to carving and you obviously follow my channel and you like the stuff that I do on Instagram and the like, that um, you can go over, you can go over, press the links, and then go over there and purchase these items. And then what I'm looking at doing is obviously setting it up as part of the, with the affiliate with Am, uh, with Amazon. So then basically, what I don't what I don't want to do is go down the road of doing Patreon and stuff like that because I really don't believe it. At the end of the day, I have to go to work. My YouTube channel isn't big enough for me to kind of earn any kind of income from it. So just to sort of stick a few pennies in the bank which obviously benefits both you as the carver or the person that's going to, you know, take on that practice and will obviously help me as well at the same time. You know, I mean, I'm not going to, you know, become a millionaire out of it, but obviously it just, it, it, we help each other out here. Okay, so um, stay tuned to the video and I'll show you some stuff. Right, so um, when it comes to carving and all the rest of it, I think sometimes it becomes a bit of a minefield for people just starting out. They watch other different people on the television carving with bushcraft knives and everything else. But I think as a beginner, once you've got the actual um, skill of actually handling a knife, okay, and obviously going using the mindset of obviously carrying a first aid kit with you, or even at least having a roll of insulating tape for those occupational hazards of maybe cutting yourself, any knife will do, providing it's sharp enough to obviously remove layers of wood. Now, you can, as I say, you can, you see a lot of people using a, a kind of a bushcraft knife. Yep, that's fine. Maybe in a survival situation, if that's all you've got on you, or maybe if you're just in a bushcraft situation and that's all you've got with you, the knife's going to work. But for me personally, I think the bushcraft knife, especially when you're starting out, can be a little bit too big. But then again, it could be argued as well, the fact, well, it's something that you just get used to as you, you know, whatever it is, the tool that you're using, you'll eventually get used to it. Okay, stands to reason. But I think for sort of carving and stuff like that, it's actually not a bad idea just to use some sort of um, small carving tool, smaller bladed stuff. Now, I kind of use um, like Mora carving knives. Okay, the reason why I've taken this one out of the sheath is I've literally used a piece of leather, bound it in insulating tape, and then it basically sits in there because this one goes, this one will fit inside my little carving bag, which I'll show you shortly. Um, so that's one tool. Second tool you can use is maybe one by, this one is actually by um, FlexCut and this is a TN12 model and it's quite a nice curvy sort of ambidextrous handle, you know you can hold it if you're left handed, if you're right handed, which I am. And this is the kind of tool that I, that I would use normally when I'm sort of, when I'm uh, making catapults. If I'm sort of making catapults because I want to get right down into the V-notch and everything else, I will use this because it's a nice little blade using the tip or just the tip on the side there. It's nice to get into those finer sort of corners if you like and to round them off and all the rest of it. So there's another option. Okay, but if I was to say the, 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 the sort of um, carving kit that I take out of me most of the time now, I mean the bags have changed over the years for me personally, but what I like to do is obviously like most of us we like to sort of we, we we like to try and be a little bit kind of lightweight a little bit more compact as it were as opposed to carrying loads and loads and loads of different equipment okay so this is my kind of compact dogs coughing up over there um, so basically this is just a compact kit that I use right now um, this is without a saw and this is without an axe 
as you saw in the previous video, I was use, I was actually think I was using um, a camp axe, okay. But if I'm going to be sort of using the axe and I'm doing some finer sort of chopping, wanting to remove the excess um, wood around the particular product that I'm making, whether it's a spoon, whether it's a, a chopping board or a butter knife or whatever it is, I think really the best sort of tools to be using for it really is kind of like a, this is the wildlife hatchet by Grand's Force. Okay, or well, one of my friends has even got the, you know, some of the guys have even got the smaller axes, which I actually like using, but unfortunately I'm not going to purchase one because I'm too tight. I kind of think that between this and obviously having a forest axe, okay, again, this will work as well. But if you are going to use the forest axe or, you know, something that's bigger, when you're actually chopping the wood and you're being a bit fine with it, I think try and go for sort of like just the bottom of the heel of the axe to around there okay and then you're obviously going gentle with your cuts because the last thing you want to do is start removing index fingers and all the rest of it and and, and any sort of fingers and thumbs okay so i tend to go for a for an axe which is obviously a bit smaller now you know you might say well how many axes do you need well i mean if i was to be brutally honest i've only got two axes that i would take into not both of them they never come out of me both at the same time i either take the forest axe with my main rucksack or if i'm going out just for a day visit then normally i'll take the wildlife hatchet because i can still it down the side out the way because of current knife laws and and all that sort of stuff here in the UK obviously need to be very careful all right okay again stands to reason all right so they're what I'd normally go for um, Again, you can use whatever what axe you want to use, Hulk Force or blah blah blah, or only just a, a cheap axe from the local DIY hardware store. But as I say, keep it maintained, keep it sharp, and also when you're using it, just be very fine when you're making those sort of intricate cuts and everything else when you're actually producing it, the uh, the knife, spoon, chopping board, whatever it is you're making. Okay, so there's the axes. All right, and then the only other thing that you need on top of that as well, outside of the actual initial, uh, your carving kit, is a kind of a saw, something that you wanna, you know, if you're gonna, um, you know, you wanna remove part of a limb to, to, to make a spoon and the like, and then obviously you need some kind of saw. Now the two saws that I've got here, one is the, uh, the Silky Gone Boy, um, I've also got a silky pocket boy. I've got an even cheaper one, um, this orange red one that I got from Geek uh, a couple of years ago. Again, nice and small, sometimes stick that in my pocket. And then obviously the most go-to one that seems to be with bushcrafters and the like is obviously the Baco Laplander saw. Okay, which at the weekend I was using the Baco Laplander saw, if you'd seen in the previous video when I carved the spoon. All right, so we're looking at a first aid kit, that's your priority. Okay, you need a first aid kit or at least a roll of insulating tape in your pocket just in case you cut yourself. Okay, number two, you obviously need an axe. You haven't got to use an axe, you can just use your knife. You know, you might want to use just your normal bushcraft knife and kind of use it in that kind of in that kind of motion if you like, just to sort of discard um, the excess wood that's around your around the stencil of the spoon that you're making. Okay, and then on top of that you need your saw. Alright. Right, now, if I actually show you my sort of carving kit that I'm using at the moment, this bag is obviously produced by David Fryers. Again, I'll put a link in the, in the description. Dave makes some superb bits and pieces kit-wise. He's a practical bushcrafter. He's outdoors quite a lot, and he's obviously um, getting himself off the ground with actually producing practical um, pouches and, and the like for stuff. I mean, I've got several pouches. Um, that I use within my within my um, rucksack system. Okay, um, so this is the pouch that I'm using at the moment. This current uh, this box type um, bag. Okay, so if I open it, if I just unzip it, okay, in here is all the bits that I use for making my spoons and my um, and the like. Okay, so what I do, what I, if I just pull out some of the contents, and then I'll talk through some of them each in turn. All right. Now, I've got a more, another Mora carving knife. Now, literally, what I've done with this one, this is the wooden handle one. Okay, now what I've done with this knife is I've actually cut the sheath down, if you can see there. And the reason why I've cut the sheath down, I mean, if I stick the knife back in there, you know, the point of the knife isn't cut, it isn't going to sort of like stab me in the finger or anything like that. But the reason why I've had to do that is simply because I need to fit it inside this pouch. Okay, if I was to obviously keep the, the sheath on, 
as standard, it isn't going to fit in this pouch. But then that would mean that I would need a bag, bigger bag. And I don't really want to use a bigger bag. I'm trying to just use the one that I've got. Right, so obviously I've got the Mora knife there. Another carving knife to use. I also keep a little, um, a little strop in there. This one is actually from Sharp Designs. And I actually bought this as part of the kit. And literally I use this one. Simply because the blades are as small as they are. Okay, and it is just a matter of that that motion of you you shouldn't you shouldn't really need a um, uh, any sort of sharpening stone in there because when you're using a carving knife, really you are only actually just carving wood. All right, so you don't want to have anything too aggressive on the blade. So literally, if my knife start getting a bit blunt on the carving, then literally I would just use a, a, a stropping board. You can make your own. You haven't got to go out and buy one. If you look at one of my previous videos from a number of years ago, you can literally just use a piece of um, flat board and then just with a, with a piece of library tape, uh, with library tape, with a bit of carpet tape, um, what I've done is I've stuck a piece of wet and dry on one side and a little piece of leather on the other and you can literally use that as a kind of a stropping board as well. Or if not, you can just use your leather belt. So again, that's up to you, you know, that's your choice. Okay. What I do as well in there now, I, obviously this is, this is pretty irrelevant. This is just something for my catapults. When I'm actually banding up the catapults, um, for banding them on, I literally have got this piece of this cord here that I use, but it's just kind of, I keep it in there because it's kind of part of my crafting kit as well. All right, I keep a pencil, yeah, so it's handy again for, for uh, marking out the, uh, you know, your design of what it is you're making. I also keep a little ruler, a little metal ruler in there as well. Again, if you want to be a little bit more intricate and everything else, then a ruler here with mils and inches, you know, centimetres or whatever, whatever you want to use of choice, you know, can come in quite handy for you as well. Um, I've also got a flex, this is the, um, this is the carving jack by Flex Cut. Um, I've had this a mighty long time. I've had this a real long time. Actually, it's the second one I've had, and uh, <laughs> I say it's kind of a bit like, um, bit like trigger out of only fools and horses if people know in his broom but basically I've had the uh, the first flex cut I had I had for a really long time and then what had happened was there was something happened with the mechanism with inside one of the um, with inside the system of this and one of the blades had actually it was actually nicking at my finger anyway I got in contact with flex cut customer service was absolutely amazing and what they'd done was basically just sent me a brand new one but their product is excellent and this is basically just like a Swiss army a Swiss Army carving tool. It's got a series of blades there, it's got a spoon knife on it and um, a series of different sort of um, notches and all the rest of it for, for, uh, for you know, for obviously you know, using for carving and that sort of for your carving projects. The only thing, it does come with a little bit of a hefty price tag. I think when I bought mine, I paid about £90 off one of my mates at JP um, who used to have a little uh, shop and I purchased off him for about £90. Okay, I think now at the moment they're going for about £160. I've seen them on, on, on the internet. So, um, you know, I mean, that's obviously a bit of a bold, uh, you know, a bold sort of financial, um, you know, burden to buy, really. So, but that's going, that's down to you as the individual. It depends how far you obviously want to go with it. Um, I also, the only other thing I do keep in here, really, is, is an auger. I've got a, an auger in here, and I basically keep that in there as well. I'm not going to get it out. Um, and that'll be just for sort of, I'm doing some sort of camp craft stuff where I want to make sort of dowels and everything and, and, and put wood together and all the rest of it. And then finally, oh no, I've actually got two things when I say finally. One of them is what I do as well now, is I've been keeping, I've been making stencils of spoons of different shapes. Okay, just literally out of a piece of cardboard. Okay, and what I do is I just fold them over and then just stick them in there. I've got three at the moment that I've made up. And literally they're handy just to be able to pencil round, mark off your mark off where you're gonna cut off your excess wood, and then obviously, you know, it gives you something a little bit for the eye to work on. And then finally what I've got in there as well, what I use for actually rubbing down my wood once I've actually um, once I actually want to smooth up the wood, draw out the grain of the pattern of the wood and all the rest of it, what I do use is this stuff here, this abrasive matting called Abronet. Okay, and it's absolutely brilliant stuff because if you can see there it's it's a mesh. Okay, it's a mesh, you know, you can see my face through it. And um, this stuff comes in, in loads and loads, it comes in loads of different grains. This one here that I'm holding up is 240. Um, it goes, it might go down even further, but the, low, the, but the lowest, obviously the lower the number, the higher the abrasiveness. And the higher the number, the smoother the abrasiveness, if that, if that makes sense. Now the lowest one that I tend to use is an 80. 
this is an 80 and that's very that's that's very cool so what i would do is i would use the 80 to obviously take all the burrs off and everything else also when you've carved your spoon if you get to the point then where you're looking at your scoop and all the rest of it, I've got one more thing to say as well before I forget as well, but when you're actually carving the spoon or whatever it is, you know, especially if a spoon and you're making the bowl, sometimes we were talking about this the weekend and one of the guys that was new to a bit of carving was saying that he didn't want to, he was a little bit apprehensive about making the, uh, the depth of the spoon not too thin because he's worried about obviously going through the other side so a, a way of doing that is to actually using a bit of the abronet sandpaper you can use sandpaper or glass paper or whatever but the only thing is that stuff wears out really quickly and it clogs up whereas the abronet once you've got it i mean i've had sheets of this stuff for years and once it actually clogs up you literally just give it a flick it brings out the dust and you can reuse it so it's a real good stuff really you know it's a real practical stuff to have inside your carving kit all right and then the one thing that i've obviously forgotten to show you as well which is probably quite as important as well is i've got a obviously i've got a um this is just like an old tooling tube i've got a piece of leather in there and what i've got is my this is basically my, one of my spoon knives by um, Mr. Alford, by Ben Alford. Okay, and this is my go-to. I've got several other ones as well. I've got even got uh, like a uh, one that was from Ray Mears, but I don't really like using it too much because to me the stem's too short. I actually like it with a slightly longer stem to actually, actually get into the actually get into the bowl of making the spoon. But again, check this one out. Mora do a nice cheap one for the stuff for people starting out. Okay, and some people just like using the Mora stuff anyway because it is cheap and. And, and you know rather than you know they, they like to buy the cheap you know when you're starting out buying the cheaper option and then eventually as your skills and your enthusiasm becomes better you then obviously you know you want to go out and buy better equipment but that's not to say that the Mora stuff is no good because I'm still using Mora knives now okay the flex cut if I just go back to the flex cut one the TN12 literally I've got there this this was just like a tube that would have had like um, like effervescent sort of tablets in now and all I've done is cut it down packed it out of the bottom of a piece of leather wrap insulating tape around it so obviously when you pull it out don't just be you know sort of obviously silly about it pull it out gently and then you know so you don't want the blade running down there and cutting your hand or whatever and then obviously it just keeps it nice and tidy and out of the way you know, keeps the blade from sort of, you know, stabbing into bits of kit that you might carry inside your uh, inside your pack or whatever. All right, so there it is, folks. That's really my sort of carving gear. I want to quickly show you a couple of spoons. Now, um, at the weekend, in the video, the, the, the spoon that I actually made was this one. Okay, it was this little one here, and basically what it is, if if anyone knows the Kapilka kit that you can buy, which is basically the birch, mulch, and plastic mixed stuff, you know, obviously I like having a, a cup of Kapilka at me Kapilka. Um, basically what I wanted to do, just make a little teaspoon that fits inside my brew kit. I've kind of cut down on drinking coffee outside, the three-in-one sachets and all the rest of it. And my mate Barney from Barney's Bimbles, he bought me a lovely uh, Christmas pre uh, birthday present for my 50th. And in there was some loose leaf tea. And he's been trying for ages to get me to drink loose leaf tea and to drink more tea. But I do drink tea at home. It's just when I'm out in the woods, when I'm out in the field, I just find that the three and one sachets, coffee sachets, are a lot better to drink. But anyway, so what I wanted to do was literally just make a teaspoon that would go in one of my brew bags. So this is my brew bag. Again, another one made by Dave. This one is MTP. And then what I've got in there now, because I'm obviously cutting down on the, on the coffee, which ain't a bad thing anyway, I've got one little pouch where I'll keep my loose leaf tea. I've got my infuser. People keep telling me I'm posh now because I'm infusing the tea. Um, and then I use two Nalgene bottles. One holds my honey because I don't have sugar in my tea. And I do like a little bit of a sweetness in my drink. It seems like I'm digressing shortly. And then obviously in this one I'll keep milk. All right. So, but what I wanted to do is basically make that spoon so it simply fits in with my brew kit and it keeps it all together. Um, I made a second spoon at the weekend, and this is the one that I made, and this one absolutely was beautiful. This is our, it was hornbeam. It was a piece of green wood. It was actually on the floor. We didn't, I didn't limb it from a tree. It was actually on the floor. Um, and when we were cutting some wood for firewood, we worked out that where it was damaged, it would have made some, you know, it would have made some fantastic wood. So, um, you know, some, some great materials for carving. So, a couple of the guys made um, some sort of spoonulas, a kind of a spoon cross spatula. And I actually just made, and I actually just made another spoon. And if you look at that, that is actually, you know, that's come out really, 
I hope the camera picks that up, lovely, but it was beautiful. Really nice there. Okay, so that's another spoon. Will I use it? Who knows? It might end up just in my plastic box. I actually had some nice comments from people telling me that I need to sell them on an Etsy store or something like that, but I did try that once and, and, and kind of gave up on the idea. Here's another spoon. You know, I literally, what, what, the reason why you might have seen some spoon carving and the like in some of my videos, really what I'm doing is I kind of, where I go out in the woods sometimes, I always end up coming back with extra pieces of wood. So what I've done is I'm going through all my pieces of wood, everything sycamore, ash and all the rest of it, and I'm just carving stuff up, just making spoons. It's good practice for me. It's a very nice therapeutic subject, uh, practice to do anyway when you're sitting out, sitting with mates around the fire and a cup of tea uh, or a cup of coffee. Not so much alcohol because it stands to reason. And you're sitting there carving, chatting away and all the rest of it. And before you know it, what you've carved is a nice spoon, chopping board and the like. Now this is the uh, spoon that I use at home. This is my teaspoon. Now my wife cleaned it quite recently, but normally this is clustered with tannin. Okay, now a lot of the woods, what I do, what I find I do is once the, um, once I've carved my spoons, carved me um, chopping boards and the like, it's like with this one for example, when, we cut, when I carved it over the weekend, looks nice. Use the abronet, the abronet will draw out the grain a little bit more, but what you can do is obviously run it under the tap if you so wish or run a little bit of water over it or just to pull out the grain straight away literally it's just to use a little bit of oil. Now we're not talking about engine oil or something like that, we're talking about an edible oil, whether it's vegetable oil, whether it's nut oil or whatever it is, um, just a, a nice little drop of oil, just rub it all over it and then that will literally just draw out the grain of the pattern of your wood and it transforms it to such an elegant nice piece of, um, of you know workmanship that you've made. Okay. So folks, that's it. I hope I've covered kind of everything there. All right. Um, as I say, what I'll do is I'll put, um, once I've sort of uploaded the video, I'm then going to, as I say, look into, you know, putting links at the bottom there to set up this affiliate. So I can obviously, you know, if, you know, if you're a newcomer to, to sort of carving and stuff like that, you can go over and, and purchase some bits and we can help each other out. Okay, um, so any questions, please let us know, you know, leave the comments in the description. Okay, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. I'm always looking for new subscribers, you know. Um, and, and yeah, there it is. So thanks very much. Thanks for watching, folks. Um, it would be great if there are some new car new people that are new to carving. It would be lovely to see your comments and maybe even to see some photos of the stuff that you've made when you actually get into it. Um, you know, I mean, as I say, you know, even down to making... You know, you, you sit a spatula and uh, you know little chopping boards and stuff like that as well. Stuff that's nice and handy that you can just carry in your kit. All right. So there it is, folks. All right. So thanks for watching. Please take care. Stay safe and let us know how it goes. Take care.